Hi and welcome to another FreeCAD video. We're going to be using FreeCAD version 1 to create dynamic text. Now the example of this is this cylinder here with some text on top. If I change the sketch of the pad and say set this to 50 millimeters, the size of the cylinder changes, the diameter is reflected in the text and also the text size changes as well to compensate for the diameter and it keeps it within the model. So we look at the sketch again, this time by double clicking on it and set this to something like 130 and hitting close. You'll see that we've got the 130 millimeters on top and it's within the model. So this requires a formula and some special formatting to make sure we get rid of the errors that occur from type conversions that's a value to a string along with dealing with the decimal spaces. Let's take a look how we would create such a model like this. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. For this tutorial, we're going to be using the part design. I've already created a new document. Let's create a new body and a new sketch along the XY plane. The sketch is going to be a simple circle using the circle tool, connect up to the center point and come out. Let's set some dimension for this using the dimension tool. Select the circle and we have the dimension here. Click once to drop and let's set this to 100 millimeters. Let's close the sketch and we'll select the sketch and pad the sketch by 50 millimeters. We've now got a simple pad creating a cylinder. Let's add some text to the cylinder. Come over to the draft workbench. Now, when you use the draft workbench for the first time, the working plane will be pointed to the direction of the viewpoint. We'll be placing text along this working plane. Let's align the working plane to the top view. Click on some space. Come up to utilities and then select plane. We then can select the top. Our working plane is now in line with the top plane. I'm going to hide the body by clicking on it and pressing the space bar. So it's out the way. Let's create some text. To do that, we're going to be using the shape string. Or we can come up to drafting and shape from text. The X, Y, and Z position is zeroed at the moment. If I roll over the working plane, you can see this changes. If I hit reset, we're going to be placing it along the X, Y, and Z of zero, the center point. We need a font, so click on the button on the end and find your fonts. I'm using Windows, so I know my fonts are in C, Windows and fonts. And I can pick a font from here. I'm going to go for the Tahoma. And if you was on Linux or Ubuntu, those will be in USR slash local slash share slash fonts. So that's reset the point and place a string in here. This will be the text that we want. I'm going to set this to XX millimeters. This will be replaced with the diameter of the cylinder. Let's hit OK. We'll adjust the height later. Let's come into the shape string and adjust where the origin point of the text will be. At the moment, it's in this bottom left hand corner. Click on the shape string. 
scroll down to the left hand side and find the justification. Bottom left, let's set it to middle center and click off. The text will change position. We now need to attach the text to our body. To do that, let's show the body by pressing the space bar. The text is on the bottom at the moment. And I need to take the shape string and drag it inside the body. So now if I collapse the body, it's inside. This is important because we can't run operations on the shape string unless it's inside the body. To align the text to say the top face, let's click the shape string, come into the map mode, and you can see it's not attached at the moment. Select the map mode, and then click the button on the end. The button at the top is saying selecting. If we select the top face, the text will be moved to that top face. Let's hit OK and then come back to the part design. Come into the model view, click on the shape string, let's come down and change the size. Try 30 millimeters, a bit too large, say about 25. 22, we'll do this. Now I can take the shape string and pad this. And we'll set the length to one mil. Now we've got the pad, let's change this text so it reflects the sketch dimension. So we'll come into the pad and look at the sketch. We look down at the constraints. We can see it's a dimension of 100 millimeters. I want this to say 100 millimeters. We need to name that constraint. So inside the pad, double click the sketch and find the constraint. Double click it. And we have the pop up box that we can change the name. Notice in the constraints, the diameter constraint just says constraint 2. Now I'm going to set this to circle. I am and hit enter. The name changes in the constraints. And if we hit close and look at the sketch now, come down to the constraints, we see we have the circle diam here of 100. This makes it easier to reference the constraint in our formula. We're going to take the shape string, which is inside the pad, and change string to a formula. We click on the formula on the end and we can add the constraint in here but there is a problem. To add the constraint we type in the sketch which will be in the name of the sketch. This one just says sketch so it's this one here. Click on constraints and in here it says circle diam. Click on that we get a warning saying that the unit is being discarded. If I hit OK and click off, we see we have an error down here saying it's failed to convert to a quantity. So we need to convert this somehow. Let's come back into the shape string and look at the string again. And come back into the formula. So we can use some formatting language on this. Let's come in and come to the beginning of the formula. We need to type in two left chevrons and then type percent dot and then use zero F space and then type in MM for millimeters. Then we need two right chevrons. Add a space and place in a percent and then another space. You see the result now is 100 millimeters. So we formatted the formula. So the value from the constraint is actually 100, not 100 millimeters. In between the open and closed chevrons, there's a percent sign. This will be replaced with our constraint value, as we see on the right here. The point zero formats it to zero decimal spaces. So if I wanted to format this to two decimal spaces, we just come in and place a two in. I want it to zero. 
And finally, the MM is concatenated on the end. The percent will take this constraint here, which you can see the percent here shows the replacement. That's OK that and click off. Now we have the text within. This means if I come into the sketch, let's change it, say, from the constraints here. I don't have to actually come into the sketch and change this to, say, 200. And hit Enter. This will change to 200. The change in the diameter will recompute the model. Let's change this to 50. Notice we have a problem. Our text has been truncated because it falls off the side. In part design, we're looking for a single solid. As the text has fallen off the side, it hasn't created a single solid. So we need to solve that by dynamically changing the size of the text. Again, we can use a function. By clicking on the shape string and coming down to size, we can click on the button on the end and change this. At the moment, it's saying 22 millimeters. I'm going to use the sketch again and the constraint, the circle diameter, which is 50 millimeters, and times this by 0.5. So this is 25 millimeters at the moment, so we've halved it. We can play around with the size, and I'm going to go for something like 0.15, and hit OK, and click off. That has now changed to 50 millimeters, and it's all in the solid. So we don't get this truncated. That's come back to the sketch. You can double click it. Let's change this to 100 and hit enter. Close the sketch. The size of this has grown and it's kept within the solid model. Change it again, this time by using the constraint and set this to say 500 and click off. We can see how that stays within. So that's how to use the functions with the shape string and create dynamic text for your models. This is good for such things as creating tooling. Say if you had some drill bits that you wanted placing holes, you could create a series of holes, each with a shape string by the side of them and link them up to the diameter of the hole and add that dynamic text within there. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.